my god, I'm just gonna go off on a tangent and the video hasn't even started yet. <sighs> I'd like to say I had an order for this, but I don't. Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna be talking about my 2022 favorites and specifically my high-end makeup favorites. I tried so many products this year. I have enough to do drugstore separate from high-end makeup and then I'll probably do like a hair care, skin care video if you're interested in those. But yeah, I just discovered a lot of favorites this year. I've done a good amount of traveling back and forth, so I had a good chance to try and really get to know these products really well. So I have discovered so much and want to share my absolute favorites with you guys because I know a lot of you are interested. I know these year-end recap videos are really popular and I myself love watching people's yearly recaps because whatever stands out to someone throughout an entire year is obviously an awesome product so that's what I like to search for when I look at other people's videos. So yeah, I hope you guys learn something from this or find a new favorite because of this and let's jump right into it. Starting off first with SPF, I have used two different SPFs this year. One is the Super Goop Glow Screen and that gives your skin a really beautiful glow and it also doesn't interfere with any makeup application after. Their other primer, the Unseen Sunscreen, has that kind of silicone texture, so I find that it does interact with some foundations, but the glow screen does not, and I used it for about six to eight months out of the year pretty consistently. And the only issue with it is that I have oily skin, so I find that it doesn't look super great in my T-zone. So then I was on the hunt for a different SPF that would be kind of one that you could use universally with different makeup, and one that didn't leave a white cast and that just gave enough SPF for my very fair skin. So the other one I've been enjoying this year is the Belief True Cream Aqua Bomb Sunscreen. I haven't been using this but for about four months out of the year. It's been really great for days that I don't want extra glow, but I just need SPF. As far as primers go, when I do want a nice illuminated base, specifically on the areas of my face that are not oily, I've turned to the Rare Beauty primer, the illuminating one. It's the, yeah, it's the illuminating primer from Rare Beauty. And I've gone through I've gone through almost an entire one because it is so good. It doesn't, you know, mess with any other foundations. It looks good with everything. Whenever somebody asked for a primer this year, I recommended this one for illuminating. The only other high-end primer that I've been using and enjoying this year was the Milk Pore Eclipse Primer, and it gave you that diffused pore look, and I would specifically focus that in my T-zone, and I thought that it did the job really well, and I haven't seen that many people say super nice things about it, but I actually really enjoyed it, and I only bought the mini, so I'm actually gonna repurchase the larger size during the next Sephora sale in like April. But yeah, those are the only two high-end primers I've used all year and the rest have been drugstore. Okay, moving on to concealer. By far my favorite of the year and part of last year is the Lancome Tint Idol Ultra Wear All Over Concealer. Apologies, I do not speak French and can't even pretend to, so I probably butchered that. But this is just fantastic. It's good for spot concealing, it's good for under the eyes. It's a great eyeshadow primer. It's honestly replaced my eyeshadow primer too. I used to use specifically like an eyeshadow primer every single day and now I have stopped because I just use this. This gives you great coverage. I, I've found it's good for cleaning up any eyeshadow mistakes or eyeliner mistakes too with a little brush. It's just been truly a multi-purpose product for me and that's why I've thoroughly enjoyed using it. I just find that it goes with everything. And if I use a skin tint all over, I find that I can also use this to increase the coverage in areas where I feel like I need that. Loved, love, love this concealer all year. My other favorite of the year is the LYS Triple Fix Full Coverage Brightening Concealer. I definitely agree that it is brightening. I love using this under the eyes. It just really gives a flawless look to your under eyes and it does that extra brightening that some other concealers do not do. My only gripe with this, besides that the packaging is so hard to get out, is that they need a lighter shade for my very pale, very pale skin. 
This is the lightest shade I think that they offer. It's LN3, and there might be one less, but it's more yellow. They have a ton of shades though, like don't get me wrong. It's just like the perfect color for all over my face, so I'd need a lighter color for under my eyes. I think that they have a fantastic range. I just want one more color for under my eyes. LYS has been one of my favorite brands this year. My honorable mention is my favorite of last year, which was the Makeup Forever HD concealer. I went through a couple tubes of that last year and it took a back seat to the Lancome this year but it's still so good so if you're you know in the market for new concealers those are the three top suggestions that I have and yeah let's move on to foundation my number one number one top top favorite foundation of the year is this right here the makeup forever hd skin foundation now this is the reformulated version of the hd skin that came out this year and since i got it i have not put it down i have a backup already because as you can see i'm getting a little low and this is the exact color of my skin i don't have to buy two shades of foundation which is you know, a really great reason to like this. But I also just th think that this looks so beautiful on the skin. It looks good when you apply lighter amounts. It looks good when you build it up. It can truly be a day-to-day -day foundation, a going out foundation, literally anything that you want. And it just looks so beautiful in person and in photographs. So I have been just obsessed <laughs> with this and it will continue to be a favorite. I did not actually try the original HD Skin Foundation from Makeup Forever, so I'm not sure how they really compare to each other, but I'm just so impressed with this new version. So if you've been thinking about picking up a new foundation to try, this is my number one recommended from 2022. Oh, my second favorite for 2022 is the LYS Triple Fix Serum Foundation. Do not let serum scare you here. This is not uh, a skin tint whatsoever. Got some coverage to it. They have such a great range of colors like I was talking about for the concealers. They have uh, really beautiful shade ranges for different undertones. I find that their neutral is truly neutral and their pink undertones just work really well for me. So yeah, I have a darker and a lighter shade in this foundation that I mix in with other foundations when they aren't quite the right color or they aren't giving me enough coverage and so this has truly been used the most and mixed in with everything this year to make my custom shades and just make everything work for me. This just makes everything work so well. Highly, highly, highly recommend this. This has really been a year for foundation launches, so I do want to mention quickly uh, a couple others that I've been using and loving so much. So number three and four tied respectively would be the Ilia True Skin Serum Foundation. This just looks so natural. It gives you enough coverage to even out your skin tone perfectly. It's not full coverage, but it's not light coverage either, and it has niacinamide in it, uh, and I find that my skin tends to clear up after using this for a couple days. I just think it looks so beautiful in person. This is like truly your skin but better foundation. It's not a skin tint, which I, I don't really use skin tints that much unless I'm playing golf and I don't want a full face of makeup on the golf course, but I have really loved this for going out because I think that it just looks so beautiful in person. So. I have to mix two shades to get my perfect shade, of course, typical for me, but I have just loved the way that this looks and how natural it makes my skin look. Next, I have the Lancome, again, I'm not French, Lancome Tinty Doll Ultra Wear Care and Glow Foundation. And this was a new release this year. It's not the matte version of this foundation. This is the newer, glowier one and uh, the wear is really great on this. It wears a long time. It just looks so beautiful. It works with my oily skin. It kind of checks those boxes that I look for in a foundation. So, you know, not overly matte and drying, has some glow to it, a little bit of a satin finish. This foundation has medium coverage and says it's best for oily combo or normal skin. So I'm not sure about how this works for dry skin, but it works really well for me and it is described as a serum foundation, even though it does have medium coverage, so kind of similar to the Ilia in a lot of ways. And it describes its finish as natural, which I would agree, but I believe that the Ilia looks more 
like your skin, whereas this one looks a little more like you're wearing foundation, but not in a bad way at all. If you're interested in trying, you know, a medium coverage serum foundation for oily skin, I would suggest one of these two. My newest addition to my collection, so I'm not gonna stay here long, is the Iconic London Super Smoother Blurring Skin Tint. And this is so blurring. <laughs> I mean, this is beautiful. I wore it over to my parents' house and I had on this with the Charlotte Tilbury powder on top and my mom was like, what did you put on today? Because your face just looks so pretty. Yeah, I really haven't put this down. It's more of a skin tint kind of product, so don't expect like full coverage, but it has more coverage than the Fenty Ease Drops. The blur you get on this is just so nice. For like a lower coverage foundation for 2022, I would suggest the Fenty Ease Drops still been a consistent favorite for me on the golf course and then also the iconic London one. Let's move on to powder. My number one powder for the year has been the LYX <laughs> Triple Fix Powder. Uh, look at this. It's empty. So clearly I need to go get a new one. Yeah, I've gone through several of these. I go through powder pretty quickly because I like to powder everywhere. It's a translucent setting powder, but it's gonna give you a little bit of coverage. So if you apply too much blush and you add some of this on top, it's gonna kind of even that out a little and make it not so bright. I just found that this has been the best powder for my oily skin all year. I don't have to worry about my makeup going anywhere when I have that in my T-zone. So that's been my number one fave. OYS is coming in strong this year, and you'll see that Makeup by Mario is also gonna be one of my number one favorite brands. Another favorite this year was the Rare Beauty Powder. It's the setting powder in light, and this is stunning under the eyes especially, and then I like to set the high points of my face with this so I don't lose the glow that I had there. The LYS one will mattify a bit, so I typically would take like more of this kind of product and put it on my cheeks so that I get to keep that beautiful glow and then have the rest of my face set down so that it's not going anywhere. And this is just really pretty under the eyes too. Definitely loved this all year. Let's move on to bronzers. My number one favorite has been the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer in light medium, which would not normally be the shade that you would pick for me if you were picking out makeup for my skin tone. I would normally be in the light category, but the light version, which I have somewhere, is more warm tone, and this is a perfect like neutral tone. I think it says on the website that it leans cool, but I find that it's about neutral. I used it on my skin here. I just think it's so stunning. It's the perfect color. It's not too much pigment. It's not too little. It just is an effortless blend every single time. If you are new to makeup, get this. <laughs> if you love makeup, get this. Like this is my number two product for the entire year. Super, super impressed. Already bought a new one because I've gone through this. I have enjoyed the Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Perfector on top of that skin enhancer, but only on special occasions. This is really glowy. So I kind of have to, you know, stay away from this gold strip in here and dip more into these sides when I use it and make sure to only use it where I want glow. But when you pair it with that other product, it looks really beautiful. And anytime I wore the Skin Enhancer, the other one, the cream one, I found that I got so many compliments on my makeup. Uh, and when I pair them together, I got even more compliments. So there's clearly something there that they're building off of that makes them work so well together. Marika by Mario killed the bronzing game. So let's move on to number two. The other favorite of the year is the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Bronzer in the shade Light. This is, in a similar sense, the perfect amount of pigment. It's not too little, it's not too much. It's if you pack it on a brush, you're gonna you're gonna get pigment, but you're not gonna, you know, overwhelm your face and mess your makeup up. It just looks really natural and beautiful and it just blends in so well with everything. So this has also been a favorite this year. My other powder bronzer favorite of the year was the Huda Beauty Glowish Soft Radiance Bronzing Powder in the shade 01 Light. This does not give you a lot of pigment, but this is a slow buildup to the kind of effortless look that that Mario Skin Enhancer product does. So this will give you that perfect 
seamless look on the face. It just will take you a bit longer to get there. Nothing really beats the way that this powder bronzer as a powder looks on your skin. The other one was a cream, so it, you know, it's more emollient. It's gonna blend in a little bit better with your foundation, but the fact that they've done this with the powder uh, is pretty incredible. My only gripe with this is that I've hard panned it <laughs> and hard panned it pretty quickly. So I don't know if everyone experiences this or if it's just me or if I did something wrong here, but this is the perfect bronzer if you do not want to over bronze. Even if you build this up, it's never going to look like it's too much. So yeah, I've really enjoyed the Huda Beauty all year. Then for contour, I've only used the M Cosmetics So Soft Sculpting Stick in the shade Terra. This is the perfect color for fair skin tones, right here. It is not too warm for me, and I need, you know, a very cool toned color to contour it with or else I look ridiculous. I've used this non-stop all year. This is my second one. This product is matte and I've found that it has a beautiful wear time. It stays put. I used it today just here, here and underneath the chin. Uh, it's the perfect color is my main thing and it's so creamy. That's what I love about it. I don't have to work that hard to use it. I think if you look through my Instagram, every single video has me using this as my contour, so I can't say enough nice things about this product and this color. For blush, we all know what I'm gonna say. It's not shocking <laughs> or surprising, but the rose ink blushes have been my number one for the year. The rose ink blushes have an incredible wear time for being a cream product. They visibly brighten, blur, and hydrate skin with a buildable flush of radiant color, and I would 100% agree with that description. It just give your skin the most beautiful color. They just have so many beautiful shades that can really complement any look that you're going for. I like Heliotrope in particular because it goes with every single look. You cannot go wrong with this color on my skin tone. And Foxglove just is the most beautiful burnt orangey kind of color and I loved that one all year and still have it in my travel makeup bag. I use some of the more fun or newer colors a lot lately with different looks. I just go back to those because they're so reliable, so consistent, uh, and they just look so beautiful on the skin. I have an entire video where I go through every single rose ink blush swatch on my face and on my arms and everything, so if you haven't checked that out, I would definitely recommend looking through so you can see all the beautiful colors they have in that line. Yeah, these have just been an absolute go-to all year. Another blush favorite this year were the M Cosmetics Heaven's Glow blushes. They came out with a new collection this year that were more neutral tones and everything that launched in that collection was absolutely beautiful. So I would recommend checking out that new neutral collection that they had. I used this one in Rococo a lot, especially uh, where my bronzer meets my blush. This was a beautiful transition. It's a little too dark just on the apples of my cheeks, but I've used this uh, a lot and the other colors as well. My most used blush from the Heaven's Glow M Cosmetics blushes has been Venetian Rose. I've been, you know, just really into the cool tones the past few months, so this has been on my desk. I bounce around between all the colors because I am obsessed with all of them. They are a radiant finish on the cheeks, which is what I look for usually in a blush. I want that glow because my skin usually looks oily here, but I really like, <laughs> I really like the glow over here. Okay, lastly, and I haven't talked about this on my channel yet, but I've been meaning to do a swatch video. The RMS Beauty Redimension Hydra Powder Blushes have been a favorite ever since I picked up all of the colors. Uh, I think that was like summertime when they came out. And yeah, specifically the shade Sangria. Oh my God, I mean, look at it. It's so pretty. These are really, really radiant. Like Heaven's Glow blushes are not as radiant as these. These are almost like a highlighter and uh, I love it. <laughs> so uh, they give the cheeks just a beautiful glow. If you have texture, obviously this is gonna be slightly texture enhancing. That's the nature of this product. I don't find that the M Cosmetics are very texture enhancing. So if that's something that you're looking into, then I would get that one over this one. But this is ooh, just like so beautiful. I don't have it on today. I don't know why I keep moving over like that. Every time I use this, I'm staring at my cheeks in the mirror throughout the day because they just, looks so glowy and beautiful and they have a wonderful 
Shade Rage, I think there's six or so different colors and they're all pretty unique. I find this one to be my most used, but I like to mix and match them just to create some custom colors. I think on a recent TikTok, I used two different colors together and it just looked so pretty. So yeah, these have also been my other blush favorite of the year. My number one favorite product of 2022 and my mascara favorite of the year is the Tower 28 Make Waves Mascara. Oh my gosh, did they do it with this one? I think they said they spent years coming up with this formula. Good, we needed it. We needed those few years to make something so perfect. I can't describe a better mascara to you. It curls your lashes so well. It doesn't clump them. It gives you volume, length, it's super black. It looks like you're wearing lash extensions. It's been my consistent favorite ever since it launched. I have not put it down. I don't think I've used another mascara since. If you're gonna try one thing that I've mentioned this entire video, it needs to be this. And it's been sold out a couple times, so they sometimes have it on the Tower 28 website instead of like Sephora or something, but you need to try this. You need to try it. I think this one in Allure Best of Beauty before it even <laughs> launched, which, you know, isn't even possible, I don't think, but then I tried it and I was like, well, maybe it is. Maybe it is possible. My favorites before the Tower 28 were the Ilia mascaras. They just wear so well, especially the Limitless. I find that it just has such a unique wand where you have like one side where you can build up volume and one side where you can get the, you know, clumps out. It's a unique wand and was highly used by me. Also the volumizing one, I found myself going back to that consistently as well. My favorite brow products of the year were all from Kosas and I had these in my travel bag when I went on a trip and when I came back, I couldn't find them and I was like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? When I have that feeling like, oh no, how am I gonna do my makeup without this product? I know that like that has to be such a staple then for me because I'm actually relying on it consistently. But yeah, these are, have been so great. This is the perfect taupe color for my eyebrows. I've never found a better color for me in any other range. It leans on the dry side, but it's not, you know, so dry that you can't work it through the brow and then I mean, it's cute too. Like I just reach for it too, which probably because it's cute, but then I use it and I'm like, wow, this is just actually so great. The tinted brow gel I use a lot, especially when I just want a one and done kind of thing. I don't have time for the pencil and all the whole thing. So then I use the clear brow gel usually when I use the brow pencil so that I can set them in place. Uh, it's not like the firmest hold. It's not gonna last, you know. 14 hours or anything crazy, but it does a really good job. It doesn't get those little clumps or dry down weird in your brows. You know how some of those brow products dry down and you have like crispy brows. Like, no, this is not gonna give you that. This is gonna feel like it's not even there, but still hold them for a decent amount of time. Loved all of these all year. Still going to continue using them. They're so great. My eyeliner faves have been the Makeup by Mario eyeliner pencils. They were out of stock all of 2022, the whole year, which is like really upsetting. And it's still out of stock in the color that I love the most, which is Perfect Brown. So, you know, I kind of even stopped using these as much because I was scared that I would run out with it and just be so upset. So then I started using liquid liner instead. Why are these not in stock? I don't understand. But yeah, these are, these are the best liners that I've ever used. They also have this really useful, nope, not that side. They also have this really useful brush on the end that you would think that you would never use, but it just creates the perfect winged out effect that's you know a little smoky but still soft. I just can't live without these and the little brush on the end. I really like the little brush. <laughs> the Makeup by Mario browns are just the perfect colors. The soft brown is like a warmer brown. It's just a really nice color and the perfect brown color is more of a cool tone, goes with the cool tone. Looks, I've just been obsessed with these and when they bring back the perfect brown shade, I will be buying several. Hindash's liquid liner was my favorite of the year. This is a brand new one because my other one just ran out and it took an entire year for it to run out and I've used it all the time. It's it's just, it's really good. I got this in my Beautylish box is what it was. Uh, the one that they do at the end of the year, the Lucky Bags, yeah. And was just so impressed with it. It's the perfect brush tip if you're like me and you just 
want to try something different than tattoo liner, definitely give this one a go. It will last you forever <laughs> for getting the detailed work and for also getting the edge of your wing on the end of your eye without any bleeding whatsoever, without having to dip in multiple times. It's just, it's so good. We didn't talk about highlighter, but I've used this the entire year and have barely made a dent in it. This is the Pat McGrath Labs Skin Fetish Sublime Skin Highlighter in the shade Incandescent Gold 002, and it's from the Bridgerton collection. It has that Bridgerton packaging on the front. It's just a really beautiful shade for my skin tone. It's very bright, and that's exactly what I'm looking for, so this isn't for the faint of heart. If you're fair and you want to really blinding highlight. This is a good one. I have used it the entire year. It has never left my vanity. I've really not reached for too many other blushes other than one more I'm gonna mention, and it's pretty much just been this. My other favorite also blinding highlight of the year is the Makeup by Mario Soft Glow Highlighter in the shade Opal. I waited for months to pick this up. It was out of stock and I had to wait until a really weird time. I get those like notifications from Sephora on my phone and I'm that person that then orders it. But yeah, it's blinding, it's beautiful, it blends in with the skin so well. Liquid highlights just don't do enough for me. I really need this extra little bit on top. Yeah, when I reach for powder blushes, it's been one of these two. The Pat McGrath is more of a gold and the Makeup by Mario is more of like a white highlights. So I just use one or the other, depending on, you know, what kind of look I have. I'll use the white opal highlight a little more when I have cool tone looks and then go for the gold when it's more of a warm toned look. My eyeshadow palettes of the year. My number one most used throughout the year was the M Cosmetics Divine Skies. This one is Rodin. It's the lighter of the two. I find that I pretty much use both of them interchangeably. It just kind of depends on how light or dark I want the look to be. So this is been my neutral favorite and go-to, especially when traveling. This is small, compact, really easy to take with you. And I took these with me on, you know, over six weeks of time away from home this year. So definitely got my use out of them and enjoyed them. They kind of gave me some more appreciation for neutrals than I've had in a while. The other palette I haven't been able to stop using, especially in the beginning of 2022, is the Disney Encanto eyeshadow palette from Olimar Cosmetics. Like, oh my gosh, is this not so beautiful? It, it was so fun. I brought it with me on a couple trips and you could do a neutral look with, you know, these two colors and then a couple of the shimmers in here and then if you wanted to have fun that day you could pull from the blues the purples this was just this was it for me it was just a consistent go-to the colors were so fun it's beautiful it blends well the shimmers are insane it sucks that this is limited edition and i'm sorry to even be mentioning it but i can't not mention it maybe we can bother alamar cosmetics to re-release it i don't know how i would live without it oh my god come on and you're telling me they're not gonna sell this anymore that is a travesty I have a couple other Alamar Cosmetics products, but this has been my favorite of everything I've ever tried. And I will continually DM them on Instagram asking for it <laughs> for you guys, because you deserve that. <laughs> so anyways, since I'm so sorry about mentioning, you know, a limited edition product, I'm gonna make it up to you. My other favorite of the entire year was the Anastasia Rose Metals Palette. Ever since I picked this up in about October, I haven't put it down. It hasn't left my vanity. It hasn't gone anywhere. It's so good. This made me, you know, get so many feels for ABH back. I've just been missing their eyeshadow products and all the Norvina palettes, you know, haven't really spoke to me. They're fun for creative looks, but they don't speak to me on an everyday. This has been just so fun. They're so smoky, they're beautiful. The shimmers are absolutely fantastic. They're so creamy. I mean, there's obviously kickback because we remember that ABH has kickback right there on the end. That, mm, yeah. They're just so metallic and reflective. And if you like these tones, 
then you need to pick this up. Another more neutral favorite for eyeshadow has been the Charlotte Tilbury Super Nudes Easy Eye Palette. I've spoken about this several times on my channel, so I won't talk about this for too long. This is just the perfect palette for any cool tone or warm tone look, especially for going out. This is the perfect travel palette too. It's small, you can take it with you, you have every color that you need, and then you can pull from other metallics or fun toppers that you have to create a full look or just stay with an all, you know, matte kind of look. Some of these do have a little bit of a sheen running through them, which make them just that more beautiful. They just really look uh, stunning on everybody. So this has been a big palette for me, especially when I was traveling. My other eyeshadow standout is the Natasha Denona Pastel palette. I know everybody really wasn't feeling that one, but I used it for many, many months. From, you know, springtime all the way into the end of summer, I was still pulling from that palette. That palette really encouraged me to play with makeup and to just have fun again with eyeshadow. So I really enjoyed that palette. I, for some reason, pulled the wrong one when I went to sit down and I don't have it in front of me, but I just loved it. I thought, especially if you put down a lighter base, every single color popped and I could build them up the way that I want and I could have fun with all the different colors and choices. So that was a palette that I used that was not, you know, more neutral this year that I really found myself continually going back to to make other fun looks. I'm gonna pull that back out when it's springtime and continue to get some use out of it. I haven't really used any other eyeshadow palettes enough and as consistently in order to give you a full opinion. There's other ones that I've really loved and the found, I just haven't continually gone back to them like I have the few that I have mentioned today. Okay, now this is something that I know everybody is going to love, so I'm excited to bring it up. These are the RMS Eye Lights and this is the shade Flare. It's super metallic and I just pat it over the eyelid and then blend it out. Sometimes I'll take a powder and you know, hit the edges a little bit, but these do not crease and that says a lot. Liquid eyeshadow for me creases quite a bit. I don't set it, but I would find that these stay put. I love the shades. They complement a lot of different tones that I like to wear in makeup. They have a really pretty light lavender shade and that's my favorite one. But yeah, I've gotten a lot of use out of them. I'm not a big fan of the packaging because when you open the top, it just kind of comes out. So you have to be, you know, careful with it and make sure to not leave it anywhere that this is gonna get pushed in because then it'll just get everywhere. Other than the packaging, it's just a fantastic product and it looks so reflective and beautiful on the eyes and it lasts a really long time too. So if you see a color you're really interested, I would definitely recommend picking that up. The About Face Fluid Eye Paints have been one of my favorites throughout the entire year. I struggle with liquid eyeshadow sometimes and I find that it's hard to blend out or that you have to go back in or it's patchy and it's just a lot more work than it needs to be. And I find that these work really well for me, especially the really light colors. They pop so well for a liquid shadow and I don't have to fuss with it too much and they blend into each other so well. You can have so much fun with these and that's what I've been really loving this year. I paired it a lot with that Natasha Denona pastel palette. I know I picked boring shades to show you right here, but they have so many fun colors. They've just been a really great product for me. They've been continuously sold out and come back into stock online throughout the year. So wait for your color. They will come back. They are good at restocking. About Face has been a really great brand for me to discover this year. I've just had so much fun with all of their products and been so impressed by all of their products. So if you haven't checked that brand out yet, I would highly, highly recommend it. It's Halsey's brand of makeup and they really do listen to customer feedback and make improvements that people want to see. Their shimmer shadow they just put into the same packaging as this is so good. I need to like insert a clip of swatches of those because they are unreal metallic and they set down, they don't go anywhere. You know, they're really similar to the RMS except they're glittery and the RMS is not glittery. It's more just like a metallic sheen. So if you want a little more glitter, but the same kind of concept, check out the new About Face one. They're in this kind of packaging now instead of the weird bag thing that they had going on before. And I hope that they expand that range now that they're getting the attention that they deserve. Moving into lip liner, there's only one in this category for me and they're the Rare Beauty lip liners. 
I have about five of the different colors and I've used them absolutely nonstop, especially the shade Bold, which is like my lips but better for me, and then Gifted, which is more of a plum brown shade. Uh, and then if I want a little more contour, there's Wise, which is like a brown. Those three have been consistently on rotation for me and I've just really loved my experience with them. They're creamy, but they set down, they don't move at all. They complement so many different lip products. I was honestly shocked because I bought them just to go with the lipsticks, but then I found that I was using them with any product that I wanted to try out. So Rare Beauty wins this entire round for me. Okay, for lip products in general, this year I discovered the Rare Beauty Glossy Lip Balms. I'm so sad that I didn't pick these up sooner because they really have a wonderful texture. They're so soft and pillowy, like they're just the perfect texture. And you can add these on top of anything and then it'll make it that perfect lip texture. So I have a couple different shades and that's what I've been doing. Or I've just been wearing them on their own with one of the Rare Beauty lip liners, especially this shade, Nearly Berry. I love this one. I'm gonna add some of it now actually, cause it's just so good. Mm-hmm. It's the perfect texture. I don't I don't know what they put in this to make it perfect, but uh, they figured it out. So my number one lip favorite of the year has got to go to Dior. The Transfer Proof Rouge Dior Forever Lipsticks. This is magic. Magic, I tell you. It does not come off. I line my lips and then I fill them in. I get it exactly where I want it to be. They feel so soft. Press my lips together and just wait a little bit and then they are set. They are not going anywhere. Of course, they're not gonna be the most hydrating thing in the world because they're a matte, you know, transfer proof lipstick. But when I wanna go out to dinner, I don't wanna mess with my lipstick the entire time. I don't wanna have to worry about it being in my teeth. I don't wanna have to worry about it getting on my chin when I go to eat. I don't have to worry about my lipstick when I wear this, not even a little bit. And I just, I love that so much. So I bought like every shade, of course, and have been using them nonstop because it's just so comforting to not have to touch up your lipstick throughout the day or worry about it moving at all. So if you want a lipstick that is not going to go anywhere, even through eating, you need to pick one of these up and try them. The colors are so pretty too. Uh, they tend to lean a bit warm. This is the shade 840. Yeah. They're so opaque. This is 558. These are just the ones that I have in front of me because I've been using them so much that I can't move them off my desk. And this is 999, which if you want a red, girl, this is it. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Dior takes the cake with this one this year. Third favorite product of the whole year. Moving on to Merit. Merit stole the show for me this year. I've used their lipsticks non-stop. They are the most beautiful shades. They're really buildable and the colors are just so flattering. Even the like berry brown shade, it just somehow is the perfect shade for me. It's, it's one of those products that just will look good on anybody because they've chosen just the perfect colors. And the formula is fantastic. I love how you can get a light wash of color from them and build them up to be a really bold, opaque lip. I just, I think that they are my most used lipstick of the year, just because of how stunning the colors were. It was worth reapplying a bullet lipstick throughout the day. Really enjoyed using those. They were stunning. They have some really pretty lighter shades, but since my lips are darker, I tend to gravitate towards the darker colors. So the Le Avenue color was my favorite from the Merit line. And then their lip oil is also one of my favorites of the year. This is the color Sangria and probably my most used color throughout the year, I believe. I would say so. These are very pigmented for a lip oil and they have such a light feel. They don't feel like the Dior lip oils. These are really light and soft. Just the best of both worlds because you get pigment, but you get that really nice oily texture that's still gonna stay there for you and offer that coverage and that comfort, but it's not going to feel thick. It's just so glossy and pretty. Another lip favorite of the year are the Fenty 
Poutsicle Lip Stain, specifically in the shade Berry Banger. Oh yeah, this was it for me. I use this constantly. I use the other colors too, but this one was my favorite. I just like a cool tone lip because I've been, you know, into cool toned eyes lately. But when you put this on for just a little bit and wipe it off, it leaves behind, yeah, that beautiful stain, that beautiful color right there. And yeah, I can't get enough of it. I liked it more when I did wipe off the stain than if I just left the full lip on all day. I like the effect and the comfort that that product has. It truly is the most comfortable lip stain I've ever worn and my favorite lip stain of all time. So if you are in the market for a lip stain or kind of want this effect, on your lips uh, with just a liner or something, you're gonna love those. They need to come out with more neutral colors though because I really need like a brown or something. Mm, it would be so good. I'm like a lipstick hoarder, so I have tons of them and I do go back and use a bunch of different colors. So the three other lipsticks that I used other than the ones that I just mentioned are the Rose Ink lipsticks. I use those a ton. They set down really nicely and they have some really beautiful colors. Then I also used the Bare Mineral ones that set themselves down. I'll insert a clip because I can't think of the name of them, but I have those in quite a few colors and use those a lot before the Transfer Proof Dior ones came out. That was what I was using so that I didn't have to worry about my lipstick throughout the night. Editing me, jumping in here just to say how much I loved the Auric Lip Balm this year. The Auric Lip Balm really changed the texture of my lips. It gave me so much moisture and comfort throughout the day. I used it constantly and I saw a huge improvement in the lines on my lips as well as the hydration of my lips. They also just added some new colors and they're all so, so, so beautiful on the lips and I would definitely recommend checking them out if you are constantly needing a great lip balm to hydrate you, especially during the winter. Last but not least, setting spray. I've used this for the majority of the year. I've gone through one, this is my second one. I really liked the Professional Super Setting Long Lasting Makeup Setting Spray from Benefit. The mist is so fine on it and I just found that my makeup lasted so much longer. So I really enjoyed that one, especially if, if I knew that I needed my makeup to last a long time. My other favorite was the Charlotte Tilbury Setting Spray. The benefit to spending more on the Charlotte Tilbury is that that setting spray really sinks your powder into your skin better than before you sprayed your face with it. So it really helps blend all the powder that you just put on your face. It really helps make that look more skin-like. Uh, so that's the benefit of, that's, that's a pun. That is the reason to pick up the Charlotte Tilbury right there. It just makes your powder look so much, so much better. But the Benefit one is great as well. The mist is way nicer on the Benefit one. So thank you all for watching. I'm sorry this is so long. I just wanted to make sure that I got through everything that I really enjoyed the past year. Since I started my channel recently, I haven't you know, had the time to share as much about my favorite products, especially of an entire year. So this was my first chance to really go through and share all of those different things with you. I will like to continue updating you on my favorite products or doing favorites videos or something like that. So I'll definitely keep you in the know as I come into new products that, you know, make it into my routine. But yeah, these were the ones that I loved the most in 2022. I'm super excited to see what I love the most in 2023, but I have a feeling a lot of these I'll continue to use and love this year as well. Let me know what your standout products were this year below. I'm so curious. I will hopefully get the chance to pick some of those up and try them out. Thank you guys so much for subscribing and helping me out. It means so much to me that you guys enjoy these videos. It gives me so much motivation to keep making them and keep having fun here on YouTube with you guys. So thanks for all the support. I'm gonna continue to hit you with more content coming up. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.